Before you start this video, I would like you guys to hit that like button and share this video. By doing so, you help this video move through the algorithm. In Haitian culture, we have a term called Lugawu, which is derived from the French word Lugawu, which means werewolf. Today, I look forward to explaining what is a Lugawu in Haitian culture. A Lugawu in terminology comes from the French word Lugawu. Now, in French culture, a loup-garou is a werewolf. A loup-garou in French culture is a human being who has the ability to transform into a wolf. But we can't just go by the definition because we have something metaphysically transpiring here that most only view from the surface. Because when we understand what a loup gawu is, our mind takes us back to our studies if we are educated in the world of metaphysics. There's a thing they call an animal totem. Some people's animal totem could be a fox, could be a cardinal, and it can also be a wolf. Now, in this metaphysical understanding, what was going on in France at one point in history was that they had a problem with wolves attacking them. And from some strange occurrences, there were certain people that some mystics saw when they were affected, they found an animal affected similarly. What do I mean? Let's just say someone shot a wolf. A day later, you may see a man with the same wound in the area where they shot the wolf. So let's just say someone shot a wolf in the thigh. What they realized was that an individual that may be in their town may have a wound in the same place. They may accidentally fall off something and then puncture the leg. And this is somewhat what gave rise to the understanding of transformation but to the ignorant they would think that that person just transformed physically into a wolf now in Haiti this loop gawu concept took a transformation a transformation into a vampiric creature but some of the traits of the loup gawu was present. The vampiric loup gawu could come in the form of an animal. 
It could come in the form of a cat. It could come in the form of a black dog. It could come in the form of an owl. In Haitian culture, these animals, which I mentioned, kind of have a bad connotation. In Haitian culture, people look at these creatures at times as bad omens. I remember I lived in a Haitian community in Irvington, New Jersey a couple of years ago. One of the attendants was American and she had a black cat. She left the cat out to wander. It was a day later, they found the cat dead on the front porch. Now, could it have been that people in the community looked at us as being sorcerers or lugawu? Well, we did play a lot of voodoo music in the house, loud. It wasn't hidden. <laughs> But this is how it can be in Haitian culture. But when you're in Haiti, it's even worse. The Lukawu in Haitian culture targets children most of the time. Hence why they say they're trying to eat my children. When children are sick when they're young, this is one of the go-tos for people, is that someone has sent a Lugawu to eat their children. Now, from a metaphysical sense, a Lugawu, if we're looking at it from a vampiric point of view, is a spirit that can attack a person as well as a child. But when it attacks a child and when it attacks a person, it usually comes at night. And sometimes people can experience sleep paralysis. Sometimes people can experience pain as if they slept on the wrong side. And this is a symbol at times that you may be a victim of an attack. What happens as time goes on? You get sick, you get sick, you get sick, you begin to wither away. Eventually it becomes a gross illness that not even doctors can heal or help. It can become a cancer it can become a deadly disease. They say the children are a reflection of their parents. The Lukawu are a reflection of their mother. In Haitian culture, the queen of Lukawu is Marinette Piesesh. She is the mother of these spirit beings. Hence why we see her do the same. When Marinette is sent after someone, she attacks at night. Not to say that she doesn't attack during the day, but she attacks at night. And we see the same happenings occur. A person may wake up in the morning, ah, my neck hurts, oh, my body hurts, oh, and as time goes on, you begin to see this person become very sick. Piesesh, sometimes she can wither your body parts away. I remember this one lady was working with Marinette, this man that she was working with, foot turned black. When you hear Piesesh, it means dried foot. When you hear bois sesh, it means dried hands. This spirit has the ability to suck a person dry, lifeless. 
When it comes to the concept of Rup Gau or Lu Gau, it can be trivial at times. And you will get different opinions from those who know and those who don't know. This is not a mystery that this spirit is contracted by experienced Bokos most of the time. I know the question is why would someone send this spirit out after someone? Well, it can be a land issue where someone has stolen someone's land. It can be an infidelity issue where someone has slept with someone's husband or wife. It could be a money dispute. It's trivial. <laughs> So, I hope this video was very informative. I hope you guys learned. With that said, I conclude this video. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, and subscribe.